OK, so we're going to talk about some platform updates to start with, um, as we always do on the Lab Developer Workshops. And we're getting better at this more frequent update process. Uh, you know, we had a couple of updates to the platform uh, in March uh, as uh, you know, we sort of started to change this model as, as we discussed on earlier Lab Developer Workshops. OK, and we're just really starting to see this acceleration of features and capability. Um, so one thing, uh, a number of you would have attended the Lab Developer Workshop last year where we covered Lab Advisor. Um, significant update to Lab Advisor um, rolled out in March. So Lab Advisor um, does um, near instantaneous uh, evaluation now. OK, so what do I mean by that? So for those that attended the Lab Developer Workshop uh, back in November on Lab Advisor, you'd remember we talked about the uh, the fact that Lab Advisor runs, evaluates all the lab profiles and lab series and so on, and then effectively it goes to sleep for eight hours and then it runs again. So when you create a lab profile, it could be up to eight hours before Lab Advisor actually evaluates it. And if you fix the problem that Lab Advisor finds, it could be another eight hours or so before Lab Advisor would then actually reflect that that's been changed as well. So what now happens is when you save a lab profile, lab, uh, the, the service behind Lab Advisor now evaluates that profile effectively, you know, within a few seconds, it wakes up um, and starts to analyze that profile. And then depending on how many rules we've got and, and things along those lines, it will then actually, you know, take, you know, one, two, three, five minutes to go and evaluate it. Um, and then the data would be visible in, in Lab Advisor itself. So, you know, it's not instant, but it's near instantaneous. So, you know, basically, you know, the evaluation starts pretty soon and then the, the results will be in a few minutes now. So certainly by the time you've made yourself a cup of tea and drunk it. So quite an important update, I think, there for Lab Advisor. Um, the second thing that I'd like to talk about, which is quite an important update as far as we're concerned, and we hope customers take advantage of this, is we've now got a much, much better sort of content metadata tagging capability. OK, we've actually had tagging for a long while on lab profiles and, and, and lab series, but there's been limits to them. Um, so we've you know, made a lot of improvements to the uh, tagging type capability, which I'd like to talk about. So for those that are not too familiar with the, the tagging technology, what was the problem and you know, what have we what have we tried to fix? So effectively. Tagging was very much manual and very much optional. OK, so one of the problems you often had, if you created a whole so, uh, load of tags that you might like to be attached to lab profiles, you would actually have to make sure the lab uh, authors, the lab developers added the tags in, selected the correct ones and, and all those sort of things. Um, it was also quite difficult to search for what you wanted. It wasn't as, as, as easy um, from a reporting point of view and, and so on. So the whole point of this was actually to try and make the uh, tagging more uh, a much more efficient process. OK, and with that came some some new features. So, you know, ultimately we can now have different types of tags. So we can have tags that have got single value, which is what we could always have, or we can have multi value tags. Now we can have tags that are required and then attached to lab profiles automatically. And the lab developer can't save it unless they complete the tagging information. We've got improved reporting in things like the lab profiles reports now for tagging. All the tag data is also presented via API. So if you're connecting to us via API, you could potentially use the tagging information to actually do auto categorization in your LMS. So imagine, for example, you've got uh, learning paths and you could actually create tags for the different learning paths. The lab all for ticks the boxes for the learning paths that this particular lab could be connected to. And it would get automatically added to those learning paths in your LMS because it would evaluate the tagging information. So there's a lot of ways this could be used for operational efficiency. Um, so, you know, we're, 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 we're quite excited about this. It actually has, um, um, you know, some important elements that we care about from our Challenge Lab products point of view, and we're hoping customers will find imaginative ways to use this technology as well. So it, it, it's quite a, an important change. So in the principle, tagging was there before, 
but it was really awkward. You know, you you basically only had individual tags. The new managed metadata has multi-value tags. The old system was dependent on the lab author to remember. Now you can make stuff compulsory. It's added to the profile automatically. And, and before the um, lab author can actually uh, save the lab profile, um, they have to complete the tagging information and so on. Uh, it can be used, as I say, by your LMS to catalog and categorize and so on. So you can get automated uh, categorization of that, that type of content. So there's a lot of um, capability that, we, that, that we're potentially enabling or for customers to take advantage of through all, all of this, this, this technology. OK, so what I want to do is just give you a little look at uh, what this actually looks like. So um, th there's two parts to the process. So some of you might have created uh, tags in the past. So if I go to the admin page, I can actually come in here and I can sort of create a tag. So what you, you used to do when you used to create a tag, because I don't think I've got any at the moment. Nope. OK, if I hit create tag. OK, it's my lucky day, create tag. OK, you can give them the, um, the the tag a name, lab developer. Workshop. Month, for example, OK, and then all we could do before basically was sort of do single value, OK, and what you then do is you then come and put your value in. So you you'd supply your value. So so I would actually have to have like a lab developer month, Jan, a lab developer month, February, and they'll all be separate tags. OK, however, what I can do is I can now add multiple values in here so I can actually have you know, Jan 23. Add value Feb 23. Oops. Yeah. And so on and so forth. So I'll just put a couple in one more. OK, now at this point and for this particular one, OK, this will only be a click, you know, this would be one where you'd only want to be able to select a single value. OK, what we do now support is the ability to select uh, multiple values. OK, so you can actually have you so imagine, for example, you're creating labs and they might be related to courses. You might actually have one lab that might actually be valid for more than one course. So you could sort of tick the courses that that lab could be valid in, for example. Um, so the system would allow, allow you to do that. And we'll, we'll see an example of that in, in, in a moment. So the idea here is you would go off and create your 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 tag. And what this does at this particular point is it actually creates tags which are the legacy type. OK, the sort of legacy, the old tag engine. So if I go back to the tags report and do search, what you actually see is it's basically created four tags for me. So it's the old type of stuff where they're single values. OK, um, so that that that's what's gone off. And if I was to go off and find a lab profile, OK, what, what I could do here. I don't want to create, sorry, do a find. And just put uh, the A in here. Oops, oops. In there, in there. Hopefully, I can find something useful. I could come in here and I could edit the profile. I could go to the tags page and I could choose effectively to sort of go and add a tag and I could pick one of those tags. So that was the old way. OK. Um, but once you've created your tags now, remember this is a multi value tag. OK. What you can then do is you can contact Skillable via support. And you can ask us to turn your tag into what we call a quick tag. OK, now you have to ask us to do this at the moment because it's something that we do at the organizational level for you. So we would want to know which tag you want to be turned into a quick tag to so give us the tag name. So in my case, it was that lab developer workshop month. OK, and you would need to tell us whether you want that to be a compulsory tag. So does the lab developer actually have to complete it? OK, so what we would then do. Uh, is we would go in and make a change to your uh, organization uh, object. OK, so here's the organization object for uh, lab developer uh, workshop. OK, if I come here and edit this, what I can do is I can go and add a quick tag. We are planning to make this self service, but just because of the, the, this object, there's a lot of security elements around that and we've got to do some work to do that. So the idea here is I can actually just go and add the tag so I can go in here. And hopefully find the lab developer tag, which I've just created. 
and I can add that in. OK, at this point, I can then determine that I want to make this required. Now, most of you will have multiple organizations. You'd have like a, a root organization identifying your company, and then you've more than likely got a development and a production org as a minimum underneath. So you could get these set at the top and you could then get these to be inherited down the lower layers if, if that's what you wanted to do as well. So you don't have to create them against every org you've, you've got. OK, so that's that. So that's now set that against the lab developer March uh, 23. OK, so if I save that, OK, I've got to add a note here. Add the new uh, quick tag. OK. And we can get rid of that. So what I'm now going to do is if I now go back to this lab profile, so remember this lab profile that had no tags and I sort of went to add one manually. If I now hit the edit profile, OK, and go to the tags page, notice it's now got that tag in there automatically. OK, so I made no changes to that profile. It's just inherited it because it's in that organization. Yeah. OK, also notice. Uh, did I not make it? I didn't make it required. OK, let's just uh, <laughs> whoops. OK, what I was going to do, let's just go back and do that. I forgot to tick the required box. OK, if I make it required. OK, let's just change that. OK. Cool. So if I just come out of here and hopefully go back in, having done it properly this time, if I go to the tags page, you can now see it's got a little asterisk. So if I now try and press save, it blocks me from saving now because, oh, you've got to fill the tag in before you can move forwards. OK, so I can come and put that in as you know March 23. And then I can do a save and we're sort of where we were before. OK, and I can take advantage of that in things like reports and things. So if I go to find lab profiles, you know, I could come down here and I can do things like tag. And then again, I can search for the tag that I'm after, the value that it might have and so on and so forth. OK. So that's something new that we've uh, or, or improve the way that it works and to make it you know far more useful for uh, customers and also you know just taking that having to remember to do it we're making it more of a like a compulsory feature if, if you wanted to use it just to give you an example of how we're using it internally this is actually for our challenge lab products so those that are familiar with our challenge lab products you'll know they come in different uh, different levels so like advanced and expert and guided and things so you know we got our we got our uh, level okay which is again a single select here we've got collection so is it tied to uh, an exam so that's where it's going to be uh, you know a microsoft certification or uh, an aws something like that so you can pick your certification and of course you could have labs that are connected to more than one certification so you could tick more than one box here and so on okay so hopefully you can see just how we're using them but ultimately they would be things that you could think of the ways that you might want to categorize group that sort of things and then as i say that would all be exposed via our api so you could then actually use that within your uh, lms platform to uh uh, um, auto categorize and, and things along those lines. OK. Before I talk about this, anyone got any questions? They actually spent a bit of time on the tagging. Nothing's coming to the chat. So I think we're OK. Cool. OK. Um, OK, so um, the next thing that we've uh, we've done, and you'll see this in a bit more detail later on, uh, with some screenshots that I've got later on, is if you're using the um, what we call the detailed score report. So those that have maybe created labs that you've got scoring in and you've turned on what we call the detailed scoring report, where people can see uh, exactly which questions they got right and which questions they got wrong. Um, we changed that report uh, at the end of last year. We put a nice little gauge on, so it's a bit more uh, graphical uh, and the we laid out the the answers a bit uh, or the, the each of the questions a bit cleaner. Um, we've added a print uh, button to that now. So the idea is the user could either print that and obviously print it onto a printer or they could do things like print it to a PDF printer. 
So therefore, they could create a PDF, which they could then obviously download, take away, um, and you know, print on better quality paper, or just keep an electronic copy of that. So we've added the ability for the uh, user to take a copy of the detailed score report. Okay, but you'll see where that comes into play uh, later on. So I'll just um, pause a second just to make sure that no one's got any specific questions. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, I always like to just point this out. Please always remember we try to be as um, upfront as possible about information. So we've got our roadmap website where you can see uh, stuff that we've released, but also stuff that's currently coming. Um, you know, both in our TMS, in studio. You know, so you know, one of the things to be quite interesting is this new multiple instruction set technology that we've got coming okay so we'll touch on that in the april lab developer workshop if everything goes according to plan okay so this is where you could say for example have one lab profile but actually you can have instructions in different languages attached to it as an example it doesn't have to be different languages but that's one use case scenario okay so you know lots of things going on you know um lots of really really useful stuff Interesting, we'll be talking about a little bit of this later on. Uh, AI powered script generation. So we're doing scripts, we're gonna be starting to look at actually utilizing services like AI and, and things. So lots of really useful stuff in terms of on our roadmap. And we've also got our releases um, site as well. So basically just a release hyphen notes where you can find out about the stuff that's just been released. So always worth keeping an eye on that because we're updating that every two weeks now generally for um, new updates. Also, brand new information. What I would say is this is the first time we've talked about this publicly, but that would be untrue because I talked about it this morning with the earlier version of the Lab Developer Workshop. OK, so you were effectively the second set of uh, uh, a group of people that are finding out about this from us, okay, in, in terms of a public conversation. We will be announcing officially a new product during April. You might get to see emails asking for you if you want to actually enroll for uh, public beta and, and things along those lines. So we're releasing something called Skillable Insights, okay? So what's Skillable Insights? Well, one of the great things about Studio is it generates and has lots of data about the labs that users have run, you know, scoring data, um, you know, information which could be used about the performance of labs and all sorts of things. And, and whereas you can use things like the find instances report and you can get that data, it's all difficult, shall we say, you know, so, uh, and it's certainly not what you'd regard management ready and things along those lines. So the idea of uh, this product that the product team's been working on, Skillable Insights, is to provide you effectively with insights, information into Studio with respect to the labs that have been running. OK, so it's going to basically tell you about the labs users have been consuming. It's going to give you information related to reliability, uh, potentially like they've, they've got activities and scores and all sorts of things. So the idea is you can start to work out about um, user engagement uh, and, 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 and anything about your labs, really. So there's lots and lots of metrics. Obviously, initially, we're only going to have one or two reports, but we're going to be building more and more uh, data in, into, this, into this platform. But it's not just going to be that data that's going to be in like rows of information, which is, um, you know, incredibly, you know, useful but maybe not so uh, engaging, okay? It's gonna be like you know the sort of Power BI type dashboard report. So it's gonna be brightly colored, lots of charts and, and, and those sort of things, okay? So I'm hoping to bring you a demonstration of it on the next Lab Developer Workshop. Um, we did try to get a demonstration of it um, for this but we're still working on some of the data uh, controls inside it. So um, they, they, basically the team are just not ready for it to be showed outside of the company because of because of data concerns and, and things along those lines. Um, you know, in terms of like uh, all our reports at the moment are showing data from multiple customers and, and things along those lines. 
Okay, so that's what's going on. But we wanted to tell you about it. We wanted to hopefully, you know, generate some excitement um, so that when you saw an email potentially come through, uh, if we do a public beta, I'm pretty sure we're going to from the internal comms, um, that you go, oh, I know what that's about. And hopefully you want to get on that. OK, so um, if you do see an email about Skillable Insights, really worthwhile uh, you getting involved in that.